Now, the president of Slovakia says she will give a mandate to former hardline prime minister Robert Fico to form a government. The pro-Kremlin candidate won Sunday's vote with a campaign on ending Slovakia's military aid to Ukraine. It's an unlikely comeback for that former leader who fell from power after the murder of an investigative journalist. He will now have to find much-needed allies, though, to build a coalition. Well, to talk more about the situation in Slovakia with me now, I'm joined on the set by Lukas Matzek. You're the head of the Centre Grande Europe at the Jacques Delors Institute. Thanks for coming in to speak to us. Let's start with Robert Fico's victory. Did it come as a surprise to you? Not completely, because actually maybe one year, two years ago, it uh, would have been a, a surprise. But now all the polls showed actually that he he was a, f a favorite for this election. So nobody can can say it's a, it's a surprise. So how do you explain his win then? Uh, Slovakia was the first country to deliver fighter jets to Ukraine. Why this change in support? Well, I think the biggest uh, cause of, of uh, Fico's success is... Uh, uh, all the failures of previous government. Uh, it was a coalition which started with a huge majority in the parliament with a quite uh, electoral triumph uh, th three years ago. And for various reasons, partly because of the context, of course, COVID crisis, uh, Ukraine war, inflation and so on, but also very much because of internal problems of this coalition and personal rivalries and personal hostilities within the coalition. Um, actually, the, this coalition got discredited in a very strong way and uh, actually it a lot of voters actually wanted to sanction what they perceived as a very chaotic uh, period uh, and uh, primary, uh, primary responsibility for that was the one of, of, the, um, of the former coalition. So for you, this wasn't so much a vote against the war in Ukraine, it was really a vote against the predecessors. Yes, and of course it was a vote about the consequences, the everyday life consequences for Slovak citizens and especially for what is the traditional core electorate of Smer, uh, Robert Fico's party, uh, which means people rather outside of big cities, people who are economically and socially more fragile and uh, for whom uh, the current situation is. So there was also a part of nostalgia because I think for a lot of people, Robert Fico, uh, uh, previous terms are connected with the idea of a relative prosperity, uh, calm situation and so on. So somehow it was also maybe a kind of nostalgia and hope that with him things will become normal, which is of course an illusion because the context will not change. Mm. But uh, I think it's one of uh, possible explanations as well. That's interesting because also it seems like Robert Fico is someone who's had quite a checkered past. It wasn't all glory days. Clearly, but uh, precisely, I, I spoke about people who are the core electorate of Smer, uh, who are people who actually are not convinced at all by all the arguments about, let's say, the black part of the um, of his record, um, or the affairs connected to investigation and corruption, or the, let's say, um, all the things for which actually. Approximately the half of Slovak population is strongly against Robert Fico, but his electorate is not really interested in these issues and is not believing it because, and it's a specificity of Slovakia, that the split between, let's say, traditional journalism and the kind of disinformation scene, if I may say, uh, is really huge and um, important proportion of Slovak citizens are actually um, totally oriented towards the conspiracy theories and uh, alternative uh, media. And uh, Robert Fitzo was very successful and very efficient in uh, using this, uh, this, these tools. All right. Well, let's look forward now. The big challenge for him is going to be building a coalition if he is to form a government. How easy is that going to be for him? It will be difficult because uh, there's no obvious, easy and stable solution. Of course, there's one which is, uh, let's say, very logical uh, with two other parties, one of them which is a far right party with whom he already used to govern. So it should be quite easy for him. The second one, which is some kind of kingmaker actually of this election, which is the party which arrived third um, in, in these elections with approximately 14% of votes. Actually, these people are former Smer members, so it's always difficult to recreate a coalition with 
people whom basically you consider as renegades or traitors. So it might be difficult. Um, and also the traditional ally, who is the Slovak National Party, which is the far left, uh, far right, sorry, nationalistic party, is a more complicated partner than, than as usual because um, what happened during these elections is actually with a system of preference vote voting a lot of people from below of the candidate list actually were elected and some of them are very far away from the the establishment of the party some of, of them are actually very close to parties which are even more far right than uh, the, the Slovak nationalist party so Creating a coalition uh, which would need the support of these people uh, could be a challenge even for somebody as experienced as Robert Fico. All right, Lucas, thanks so much for coming in to speak to us. So, Lucas Matzak, thank you very much. Thank you.